The big three of Shonen Jump always seemed like a lofty idea to me. It's a thing that was mostly just about their sales and less about the actual quality of their work. They were just the biggest guys of that specific era of manga. There couldn't possibly be three of the best shonen out there at the same time. I fell victim to the internet saying things were overhyped and not actually that good, which is a bad way of engaging with art. You shouldn't be going through through cultural osmosis, you should read it for yourself. And after too many years, I have done just that. I have finished reading Naruto, Bleach, and have been caught up on One Piece since the end of the Wano arc. And what I learned from this adventure is that the big three really are that good. I still have manga from Shonen Jump I like more, but I was surprised at every turn at just how good each of them are. And while they are good in some similar ways, I want to talk about what I love the most about each of them. So let's begin with the one I actually finished first. Let's talk about Naruto. Naruto is a series that balances so many incredible antagonists, it's honestly kind of impressive. I can't think of a single one I actively disliked, and I can think of so many that became some of my all-time favorites. Zabuza's Don't Say Another Word scene is just so emotionally resonant it's hard not to cry. Naruto has this incredible ability to make so many of the villains feel so utterly flawed and human. Talk no Jutsu may be a meme, but it is one of the strongest aspects in Naruto's favor. His words and actions strike at the core of the villains in a way that breaks them down into something comprehensible. And that's not to understate just how excellent Kishimoto is at making character dynamics. Naruto and Sasuke are one of the best pairs of characters in like anything ever. Their ebb and flow is just so well that you can't help but hurt when they're in dire straits with each other. Their final fight exemplifies something that I love so much about Shonen series in general, which is that a fight is a conversation, and Kishimoto makes Naruto and Sasuke's final fight into the ultimate conversation. A mostly wordless exchange, but it conveys just how well they know each other, but also need to have that one last conversation in order to fully get to the core of each of them. It is the purest shonen thing, but I love it so much. And then all of this, the same goes for Kakashi and Obito. Their fights are yet another conversation between the two, and I just love that stuff so much. Sometimes the only way to reach somebody is to just beat them out of it. And Kishimoto is a master at making these foils and coupling characters together in a way that is just so good. The panels where he uses the two halves of the page to combine Obito and Kakashi are so good and such an effective use of the page in a manga that it's really hard to not be inspired by something like that. Most of the complaints I had heard against Naruto were that the war arc isn't that good, but like, how can you hate it when there are so many cool fights in it? Sometimes I just love seeing a well-executed fight, and Naruto is chock full of them. And when he needs to dial into the character moments, he locks in and does it so well. And then when you add on the anime fight scenes, which is just incredible, and some of them are so enjoyable to watch while also making you cry because the music is so good, even though no one has said any words, it is just them fighting. Really, I'm just talking about the Kakashi Obito fight in the anime, which is an incredible sequence, and is so simple and yet so incredibly effective at getting me to just cry. Where Naruto excels with the smaller, more intimate dynamics, One Piece excels at creating this vast world with so many wonderful characters living in a truly rich world. I caught up on One Piece at the end of Wano because I'm nothing if not a sucker for catching up on a series when there's a big hype moment or a easy entry point. And for all of those who are scared of the length, I see you and I just say, take your time. Start like a book club or something. Each place is a pretty well-defined arc, so you can just pace yourself with that one. That's how I did it, at least. And One Piece is a story that delivers at every turn, and truly feels like something that has been planned out well in advance. Every chapter recently, I see people calling back to images from like 800 chapters ago, and I can't help but be impressed at that level of thought and care. The world of One Piece feels truly vast and alive that is really inspiring for writing stories, especially with, like, the worlds they inhabit. Every place is these little details that make it stand out while also being propelled into an arc that helps it change for the better once Luffy rises up and goes, this is bad, we need to fix it. Because he is just the most free and makes the most of that. He's such a fun character too that it's really impossible to hate Luffy. But it's also a series where I see so many people have so many different favorite characters outside of the Straw Hats. 
where it's like everybody has their favorite straw hat. But then so many have like a secondary guy who's in like 30 chapters at most, and that's their favorite one. I'm partial to Marco myself because I just like fire guys and I think his Phoenix thing is sick. But a similar thing with this where people have different favorites is with the story arcs. There are easy answers like Marineford, Wano, or Dressrosa, but I've seen just about every arc be someone's all-time favorite, and I think that's a pretty good testament to how good of a writer Oda is. I respect him so much as a creator, but I'm still sometimes in awe at how he is capable of making a story like One Piece. Personally, if I had to pick a favorite arc, I'd pick Marineford. I think it's such a thematically dense arc while being so incredibly engaging and cool. It's probably in my like, top five arcs in fiction in general, only behind stuff like the Golden Age arc from Berserk and the Chimera Ant arc from Hunter x Hunter, which is high praise to be among those greats. I don't know how Oda does it, but somehow he is still firing on all cylinders. Egghead has been an absolutely incredible arc. He's continued to make a story arc that I'm impressed for how massive it feels, while also being so engaging at character levels or in the smaller scale. And now we turn our attention to Bleach, my most recent completion. I had heard Bleach was the weakest of the three from many internet sources, but I think it goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with the other two. My biggest gripe is that the internet broke up the arc so much when there's literally an Arankar arc end after the Aizen saga ends. The internet tried to split it up like One Piece when Bleach is a story that changes locations but stays in the same arc. And it just made me more confused when it said we were in a new arc, and I'm like, the same thing is happening. We've just changed locations. Bleach's greatest strength is that it excels at just having the absolute coolest fights with some of the rawest lines ever conceived. The end of Izuru's fight against Abiyama is one of my favorites in that regard, because Izuru telling him to never forgive him appeals to a part of my brain that is just like, hell yeah. And that's nothing to speak of Ichigo's final fight against Aizen, which is nothing but moments that are just sick as hell. Bleach is a series that rides on moments of Ichigo being so back and then just decimating his opponents after he's gained this new power-up. As a whole, I'd put the Aizen Saga as another one of my favorite fictional story arcs because the build-up and execution is just engrossing. I could not get enough of it, and it just kept me plowing through chapters endlessly hungry for more. The Thousand Year Blood War arc hits similar highs while giving me those extra story beats I never knew I was hungry for until I was witnessing it with my own eyes. For context, I've only hit the 100 chapter max in the Shonen Jump app three times. Once was when I was in bored in college reading One Piece, and the second was when I was reading the end of the Karakuri Invasion, and the last was when I was in the home stretch of finishing it. That's a lot of chapters read in one day, and is just a testament to how invested I was and I just wanted to keep going until the app literally had to tell me to stop. If Naruto's fights are all conversations, Bleach's are slug fests where you want to jump out of your seat and pop off harder than Hungrybox winning a smash match. In my free room power system video I got a good number of comments from people saying that the magic are in the nicest interpretation possible plot devices to make the hero win and while Bleach is one of the few fights that could fit that boringly worded bill. I don't care. My blood is flowing through my veins and I am having the time of my life. What are shown in anime if not the heroes getting a power up to defeat the boss that seems stronger than them? I will eat that up any day of the week. It is not an issue. On the other end of Bleach though, one of my biggest prizes for Kubo is how he uses the chapter titles. They're always such a joy to look at in their own way. They go this extra mile that I will never grow tired of while making them look so cool but also, like, relevant to the arc. I haven't yet watched the Thousand Year Blood War anime, but I can imagine the sheer joy that it fills people with seeing the Vice Not arc animated, and now I really need to get to watching the shows. Granted, after reading all of the big three, I want to watch their animes more and more, even though they are so much longer time-wise. The biggest strength that the big three share is that they have some absolutely incredible antagonists. Aizen, Yawak, Obito, Pain, Doflamingo, Kaido are all just incredible. They're such fascinating characters to examine and prop up against the protagonist. Aizen and Doflamingo are two highlights for me because they just leave a lasting presence on the series. They're defeated, but they linger so large, which is a true testament to them as characters. 
where a great villain can really make a story arc, but the big three have so many of them. You could easily fill a top ten with just the antagonists of them. And another strength of all three is the art. Every series has just these masterful spreads of evocative images that can make you cry, incredibly hype, or are just impressed by the visual imagery you're looking at on your screen. As I've been reading more and more manga, it's so easy to tell how influential these series were on the current generation. And in all honesty, it's hard not to when reading the series and seeing so many breathtaking panels. Manga artists continue to surprise me with how incredible the human mind can be when creating art. That's what's made reading more manga so inspiring and thrilling for me. Browsing the internet is an easy way to get sucked into an echo of hearing a series is bad and just believing it without ever actually reading the story. I never got into any of the big three purely by wanting to read them besides Naruto, but I always had that nagging itch to fill in the gaps of my Shonen Jump backlog. I started One Piece to join in the weekly conversation, which I have yet to regret. I read Bleach because I wanted to watch Alexander's streams of the read-through, where I meant to just catch up and then accidentally read the entire series. I had these exterior motivators, but I just wanted to read the stories ultimately, and I'm really glad those ones finally pushed me over the edge to really commit to it. They're so incredibly good, and every shonen fan, or really just any person in general, should read them at some point in their lives. They're full of things to take into your own stories, while also just being incredibly fun things to read. The internet tried to say the big three were overrated, but having read them all, they really are just that good. I'm adding this section to talk about my favorite characters from each series, however, I'm excluding the main characters and characters like Sasuke because without them, the list is much more interesting and a lot more personally revealing. For Naruto, I adore Pain, Obito, and Kakashi, the latter because of their dynamic, and Pain because his arc as a character is just incredibly designed and executed to where I was just like, man, he's just so good. I'd hesitate to say he's a perfect villain, but he is very very good for one piece besides the ones i mentioned before i love shanks a lot he's just the coolest around and his appearance in more recent chapters just solidified him as one of my favorites i also really like momonga i don't really know why i just think he looks cool and then as a fire guy lover i like sabo a lot and ace too and then last i'd add uda because i just think her design is really cool my favorite bleach character that isn't ichigo is by far kenpachi zaraki i could watch him fight for all eternity the way he holds himself will never get old to me. He is one of the few purely battle-hungry characters that I actually just want to watch fight forever. I had no opinion on him when I started reading it, but now he's my favorite guy and I want to figure of him now. And I need to see his final arc in Thousand Year Blood War adapted because that will feed me for years. I did not see it coming and I was endlessly just overjoyed to see it. If I had to rank all three of them, I'd go One Piece, then Naruto, then Bleach. But also One Piece is still going, so that's a bit unfair in that regard. And Bleach was also presumably Axe. I don't know if we've ever gotten confirmation on that. Which definitely didn't help its position, because I think it needed like five more chapters to like give an epilogue of the arc. And then you can end. I think that'd be good. In terms of my all-time favorite Shonen Jump series, you just put Haikyuu and Hunter Hunter above every one of those, and then Bakuman, like, just below One Piece, and then it's fine. So that's it. Read the big three. They're great. Like, subscribe, do all that, or Zoraki will kill you.